Quite some time ago now, I made some perimeter wall segments and some people quite rightly pointed out that I'd never tested them to prove that they were up to the task. So I've, I've put my wall under some serious rigorous tests. I've got some clips. Um, let's have a look and see how it performs in the real world of Factorio. Uh, just to give you some idea of where the where I am with these turrets are all upgraded to their maximum up until their up until white science. So I've got upgraded everything, but no further than white science because that kind of gives me a, a benchmark that I can at least compare to other things. So let's have a look at some clips. So test one is just normal perimeter wall, normal conditions. I've got flamethrowers and I've got red ammo feeding some normal gun turrets and I've got laser turrets. I've got no artillery for the moment. Um, and if we look at the clips, then what I see is that the, the enemies are still able to reach the wall. They're still able to cause damage. The red ammo is good and it's effective. You know, these guys, are, they're not going to make it way th make their way through this perimeter wall. The perimeter wall is good. I mean, it might, they might cause some damage along the way, but as long as I can replace all of those units, then they're not going to get through and this wall will stand up. If we take a look at one of these big actions in slightly more detail, then we can see, you know, that they're still, they're damaging some a significant amount of units. We've got all of these alarms going off. I think it was what, 14 or 15 units have been destroyed in this attack. Um, that's too much, you know, really long term wise, you know, you don't want that. Your you factory might be able to survive it, but that's not really an ideal scenario. Now, in previous bases, I've always had a storm of enemy attacks the moment I've started feeding my artillery with artillery shells. So I wanted to run a new test, let's call this test number two, to see what would happen if I just placed a single artillery shell in a single artillery turret in a position which would hopefully attract maximum attention. Um, and if I'm being honest, it didn't really work out very well, not for this purpose anyway, because um, it wasn't instantaneous, so the time lapse is pointless. And the attack that actually er eventually arose out of that art single artillery shell was no bigger than that big attack we've just looked at. So although it is test number two, um, I don't think it's really relevant. I'm just including it here just to give you some idea of the kind of the, thing that went, the length that I went through. Test number three involves removing all of the red ammo from the whole system and replacing it with green ammo which is not a no small task but i mean i was working on other things so i just let it go you know i was i was testing this base for its spm capacity so whilst i was testing it and upgrading it and finding problems i this whole thing was taking place so that it was ready for this video anyway that's the point um so let's have a look at some time lapses now, for my money, there definitely seems to be a gap starting to form between the front line of the enemy storm and the and my perimeter wall. This these this green ammo definitely seems to have a noticeable impact on how close these enemies can get to the wall and thus how much damage they can actually cause. This is the first time I've ever used green ammunition on my perimeter wall, and I'll be honest, this made a huge difference seeing it up close you know doing the actual experiment seeing it face to face uh, it's a remarkable difference between red and green ammo if we take another look at a big attack one of these big enemy storms attacking the base then i mean it doesn't really feel like much has changed to be honest we still get a similar same similar number of alarms um i don't know i suppose it's, it depends how you read it now I definitely want to say, you know, as I once I collected all of the footage up and and had done with the filming and was as back onto the concentrating on the base and the SPM tests that I was focused on, it did start to appear like the enemies started attacking the gun turrets rather than the laser turrets. I mean, if you look at this attack, they are attacking the laser turrets and it's the laser turrets that they are able to take out. But over the t over time. They seem to focus more on the gun turrets. They start they start attacking at a slightly different angle. Now this might just be me, and I'm willing to accept that you know my own personal experiences are going to push me in certain directions. But what this feels like to me is that with red ammunition, the enemies considered the laser turrets to be the critical element of the perimeter wall. 
But then once I'd switched over to green ammunition, the enemy started to recognize the normal gun turrets as the greater threat. And so those were the elements that they started to attack. I don't know whether this is something you can use in game, but what, I mean, it seems to suggest that the, the, the most powerful weapon changes depending on the, whether they've got green or red ammunition feed, feeding the gun turrets. That's what it would seem to suggest to me. And now we move on to test number four. So I've, I've already disregarded the single artillery, artillery shell approach. So now I'm just gonna release all the artillery shells and let's just see how my perimeter copes with attacks from all directions. <laughs> and that's exactly what happens. I mean, up until now, I've had the time-lapse uh, centered on, an, on two sections of wall, which up until this point were the most critical portions of all. They were the bits of wall that were getting the most amount of attention. But uh, at this point, it starts happening all around the base, everywhere, attacks from everywhere, to the point where I, I can't concentrate on all the areas. Um, I can only be in one place at any one time, and I'm having to use radar footage to capture it. I mean, that is actually one advantage of my primitive walls, is it got radars around it, and I don't actually need to be in that physical place. Regardless, the attacks that result from this process of flooding my primitive wall with artillery shells, they don't result in attacks which are any bigger than the, result, than the attacks that we've already had. You know, the big attacks that I've shown you, they were the big attacks. These are actually quite small in comparison. They might be sustained around the perimeter of the wall and I might be having more of them, but individually, they're not, they're not any more damaging to the perimeter wall itself. In conclusion, I think what I've proved is that this wall is vastly overpowered for anything the game is going to throw at it, or at least at these kind of settings. Um, but to be honest, if you look at the wall, how much more upgrade how much more powerful can it get you know there's only there's only a certain density of, of turrets that you can achieve so ultimately there's got to be even just from a, a fundamental game balancing issue you know there's got you, you you can't have an enemy attack that will be able to defeat the most powerful wall that can be built in the game that just can't happen and although my version might not necessarily not, might not necessarily be the most powerful version that can be built there may be a higher density of versions. You know, you might be able to get 10, 20% more damage out of it. But ultimately, there is a limit to what that's going to be. Um, you can't, there's a fundamental limit to how many turrets you can squeeze into these spaces. Um, and so the enemy attacks that attack you, the, fundamentally the game has got to balance that. I know you've got death worlds and you've probably got more sustained attacks, but those are probably more problematic much earlier in the game. You know, when you don't have access to all the different ammo types and the turret types and flamethrowers, you know, when, when you're playing in those worlds, I've never played them, I'm not going to play them, that's not my sort of thing. But if, I'd imagine if you were playing those games, the problematic part of it is the beginning. It's being able to protect yourself when you've got no technology, when you've got no access to any of these nice nice toys um so that's really the ultimate conclusion is that the the, the ball that i've got is you know it's vastly overpowered for anything you're ever going to likely achieve and if you need something more well you're playing in some version of settings which are just beyond me